There are luxury boats which just spark the urge to do sport. One of these is the Azimut S6. But sometimes the luxury world gets distracted, is drawn more to the aesthetics, and it forgets to think about the technical qualities. Today, we're going to see if that's the case here, looking at the aesthetics of this marvellous model, which we will then put to the test, just to understand what influence they've had technologically when the boat was actually built. The outside was designed by Stefano Rahini, which you can see immediately. It's a style that makes all the azimuts stand out. All you need to do is look at the cuts and the angle of the window reflecting the light like it was a diamond. The clean cut of the glass syncs well with the defined lines of the bridge. It has a sharp profile and the view from up high shows a perfect balance of space between the bridge and the dimensions of the superstructure. The sun deck at the bow is a trapezoidal shape. There is a sofa close to the windscreen which you can't use when you are sailing, otherwise the pilot wouldn't see anything. The fabrics are technical yet at the same time refined a bit like the rest of the yacht. In the cockpit, the sofa next to the table is half protected by the fly, while the sun deck is in full sun, unless you decide to put the shade up. And there's a handy rail around the mattress. Below, the lockers show just how much attention Azimut has put into the storage areas too. It might seem strange, but three engines can take up less space than two. Well, that's what happens with the Volvo Penta IPS propulsion system, which reduces the engine room dimensions enough to create a very big garage for a hydrojet tender that could go up to 3.3 meters. The lounge is big and welcoming, with a lunch table that can be a coffee table with a little adjustment. The low-backed sofa means you can admire the sea in front of a TV unit. This material, which is carbon fibre film, hides the real carbon structure. The kitchen unit is so elegant that it's the eye-catcher in the room. The portion of the roof that opens up is so big that it seems like we're in an open. Everything that we are looking at inside this Azimut S6 is the work of Francesco Guida. It has a particular look, seems quite plain and linear, but it really highlights the details. You can see the research has gone into using innovative materials, which have been integrated effortlessly with the traditional oak, mixed with seafaring aluminium and steel borders. In the main cabin, the bed is on the diagonal, which becomes the basis for this layout. It's interesting and functional. The big mirror makes it seem lighter and more spacious. Along the left side, you can choose between a storage unit or armchairs or a dressing table. The windows, a long time trademark, still draw attention, as does the view they give you. In the guest room at the bow, the side walls are vertical, which gives you the feeling of space, not common for a guest cabin, and the dunnage has no steps. Of course, we are in a part of the boat that is still wide because right at the tip of the bow, there's the crew cabin. The double has two single beds, there are two bathrooms, one in the main cabin and the other is shared between the other two cabins. Osservando la timoneria, la plancia, 
Looking at the helm, the console or the driver's area, you can immediately see that the owner of this yacht is looking for luxury, as well as performance. Mi piace questa sistemazione con timone e manette. I like this system with the rudder and paddle close by, so you can sail quickly. And then, in this other area, the mooring commands are on the side, so I can manage the maneuver better and even shout out a few orders from the window. There are three Volvo Penta IPS 700 systems here. That means 550 horsepower engines. This in particular is the D8 model with its six inline cylinders, double delivery turbo and volumetric compressor. It's a 7,700 centimeter cubed engine. As usual, the drive of these diesels is multiplied by the IPS propulsion system. And there is iPod drive. There are three units here, so that's three pod drives and six propellers. So what happens when we set off? It's powerful even when it's planing. However, there is another aspect that influences the performance, which is that most of the superstructure is made out of carbon fibre. Azimut has rolled this technology out across all its recent 60-footer-plus yachts, so actually means there are a good 11 units that have been built like this, more solid and lighter. And they've used carbon for the whole superstructure on the S6 as well as the stern bridge, the garage, the soft top, and even for a good part of the bridge surfaces. And let's see what the advantages are. At 20 knots with engines at 2,000 revs per minute, petrol consumption is 160 litres an hour, which is around 8 litres per mile. Having a light deck house means there are other advantages too, like more stability, which is good news for sun tanning, but also when we're sailing, mooring, turning. We've got past 27 knots now, and considering that petrol consumption is nearly the same as before, a little more than 8 litres per mile, exactly 8.1 in fact, the engines are revving at 2,400 revs a minute, but this isn't as fast as it can go. When I accelerate, the area at the bow dries out and rises up, so the boat can go faster. This is the effect they wanted and why they shaped the boat like they did, to make it perform. There are two other things to take into consideration on this boat. The dead rise, for one, right in the middle of the boat is 21.2 degrees, and then the stern is 15.5 degrees. What does that mean? that the hull has a really deep V that allows you to go fast and comfortably over waves. A proposito di correre. And talking about going fast, 30 knots, 2,600 revs a minute, that's a good cruising speed. C'è un po' di onda, ma il beccheggio è minimo a dimostrazione del fatto che hanno saputo studiare bene le linee d'acqua e distribuire bene i pesi There are a few waves but not much movement demonstrating the fact that they knew how to study the water lines and distribute the weight well along the 18 meter length That means you can make any adjustments easily to then get a maximum speed of Well, we're doing 2950 revs per minute at 36 knots Tu 
Tutto questo quanto costa? 1.280.000 euro. Ma voglio fare un'altra considerazione finale. And how much does all this cost? 1.280.000 euros. And let me tell you one last thing. They've called it the S6 because they wanted to show that it's sporty. I would have called it the ST6 though, and added the letter T to show we're talking about a high-tech yacht too.